Once again, this tutorial is all about um, an introduction to Motion Mixer. And uh, you can access Motion Mixer by hitting F2 on the keyboard, and it brings up an uh, interface like this. Motion Mixer is an interface for saving uh, and mixing together motions, just as you would do with uh, video in a nonlinear editing program like Final Cut. Okay, so let's get started here. I'll show you how the basics work. Um, I already have, um, here is Sorn, he's uh, a dragon in uh, main star in my uh, upcoming film. And I have already created an actor for him. You need to have what's called actors, which is basically a collection of different items that you want to animate. In this case, I've taken him and I selected all the bones in this character. And uh, then I selected create actor. And if you want to add items later, you can do that here. So this guy has already been set up for use in Motion Mixer. So let's activate him, actor active. And um, I already have some motions saved as well, so I'm going to load those from disk. And uh, let's load this one, and we'll load another one. Um, let's see. All right. So now we have a couple different motions loaded here. And as you can see, if we scrub the timeline, nothing is happening. <clears throat> and that's because there's nothing in here yet. So we'll just add a motion. Whatever's selected here, you can add. And you click on there. And as you can see, this motion was created to be 40 frames long. And when you drop it in there and move it in place, now, you, as you can see, he is actually animating to that motion. So one nice thing about Motion Mixer is that you can use it to save animation and reuse it later. Um, you don't have to save out an individual scene. You can just save the animation and then load it into the mixer <clears throat> when you want it. Uh, other nice things you can do is that you can easily retime your animation. As you can see, this clip is meant to be 40 frames long, but I can easily just grab the end of it and stretch it out to be 60 or 70. So now, when we play it back, the animation happens that much slower. Or, conversely, we'll make it half, half the uh, time, and it happens that much quicker. So it's very, very nice to do that. The other thing that's pretty cool is the fact that you can take motions and blend them together and create entirely new motions out of them. So as you can see, here's a motion. There's the fly. I'll move it over so you can see these two. All right, and then there's him spitting fire in that, mo in that motion. So we have him flying in one motion and spitting fire in another. I'm going to increase the number of frames here. OK, let's bring that back up. And let's make it so that these two uh, blend from one to another. We'll put the fly motion here. And then the fire blast, we'll move it over here. And then we'll make a transition between them, just like doing a crossfade in video. Just click on one clip, click on Add Transition, click on the next clip, and you'll see this, this uh, transition block pop up here. And so let's see what that looks like. OK, and as you can see, he he just transitions from one motion to another. So you have two totally separate motions, and now you can create one clip that sometimes, depending on how you animate it, <clears throat> will blend very smoothly into the other. Uh, what it's doing here is it's doing a transition um, going from this clip, everything's being 100% controlled by this clip, and then it crossfades to being 100% controlled by this clip. Um, you can also move these over so that the clips start influencing each other. And again, it's very similar to the way you would do an effect, a compositing effect in video. So let's see what that one looks like. So as you can see, it's a slightly different uh, take on it. And you can go ahead and play around with that if you wish. <clears throat> also, if you right click in here and edit the transition, you can go ahead and bring up your graph editor and you'll be able to fine tune how the transition works. All right, so that's the basics of that. And uh, <clears throat> then you could go ahead and you could even take this entire motion here and you could save that as its, its own different motion. Um, what it'll do though is it won't save the clips together. It will go ahead and save all the keyframes down there. Let me uh, remove this. Uh, if you want to um, go ahead and uh, uh, remove a clip that's already in here, you can just right click and click on remove and it will ask you if you want to do that, yes. Uh, you can also go ahead with this little eyeball here, you can go ahead and mute channels. So now you'll see that channel's been muted and if you click in there again, <coughs> it's back. So again, just like layers in Photoshop, 
Uh, it's a very nice uh, system for doing that. Um, you can add uh, a new track. Let's say you have several tracks that are already filled by just, uh, let's see here, how did I do that? Yes, you just right click anywhere in here and say insert track and now you have a new track. Or insert track, uh, right click and remove track. And those are the basics of doing that. I will get into more detail later on what all of these things here uh, have to do. But um, it's it's quite complex, but it's very uh, uh, very uh, easy to get basic functionality out of it.